I went into the Arena Breakout Infinite's beta test with very, very low expectations, and I have to say I am very impressed with what I've experienced in my first six hours in the game. First of all, the gameplay mechanics are familiar, as the game does take a lot of inspiration from the Unheard game. The healing system is very familiar, but at the same time made much more user-friendly, as you can heal your whole body in a click of a button, as long as your first aid kit has enough durability left. Speaking of user-friendly, if you're tired of surfing on third-party websites to have a map open on your second monitor, then Arena Breakout Infinite solves that problem as well. As soon as you load in, you can open up the map, see where you are, where your objectives are, and where you will eventually have to go for an extraction. Right clicking on the objective also marks it on your compass, making it easier to find your quest objectives and just in general helps you navigate the map with ease. If you are one of those people not blessed with friendship, Arena Breakout Infinite helps you with that as well. The auto matching system helps you find up to three extra players for your squad, making your in-game experience slightly easier. So far, my experience has been great. Most of the times people will cooperate and are willing to help each other out with either questing or just finding certain items or just survival in general in the firefights. Occasionally you do get people who just kind of go out on their own and do their own thing and they don't really communicate but I think it's just mostly because they haven't figured out that there is an option to opt out of the auto matching system and yes if you are a lone wolf you can go in solo but as of right now you will still be matched against other possible squads. I do not know if this game will ever have separate queues for solos and squads but I actually think this might be something that would work well in this game particularly. Speaking of matching, the time to find a raid and be deployed in said raid is unheard of. I think the longest it took me was slightly over a minute. So safe to say you won't be spending hundreds of hours looking at a circle in the middle of the screens that says waiting for players, which in my eyes is a massive win in the extraction shooter genre. One of the coolest features in the game that is outside of the raid itself, so to speak, is the gunsmith tab. You can build whatever gun you want. You go into the gunsmith tab and you can see every single gun in the game and it allows you to modify them with ease. You don't have to go into raids and inspect thousands of items. Every gun, armor and attachment is available through the player trader market as well, meaning you can basically, if you really want, you can spend all your money and build a meta loadout from level one if that is something you wish to do. And as far as I understand, that is by design. It's not some all access closed beta testing thing, which I think is awesome. And I really, really hope it doesn't change. On release, the game will be free to play, meaning you do not have to spend a single dime to play it. The only barrier to entry is basically your PC. I will put up the minimum and recommended specs from their store page on the screen right now. With my 3060 Ti and Ryzen 7 5800X3D, I was running the game fairly well. The FPS was bouncing between 80 and 120 FPS, but I was also recording and streaming from the same PC at the same time as well, which obviously lowers the FPS and makes it slightly more unstable. I was running medium to high graphics settings, I believe. And in general, I didn't really have much issues when it came to performance. Overall, the game runs great. It looks great and is very immersive. And the gunfights can get very intense as well. But at the same time, they are also extremely rewarding and fun, especially if you get into more drawn out fights with your random squad mates, as it forces you to rely on or stick your neck out for people who you really don't know, making every single fight a unique experience. Speaking of fighting, the AI is actually somewhat fun to fight. They are not completely brain dead to a point where it feels like you're wasting your ammo killing them, but they're also not super overpowered to a point where they beam you across the map through multiple bushes. So in a 1v1 situation against AI, you shouldn't have any trouble taking them out. But they can put you into a sticky spot if you're fighting other players and you somehow get in their way. So in my opinion, the AI is in a pretty good spot right now. Today's video was made possible by War Thunder. War Thunder is the most comprehensive vehicle combat game ever made. With a wide variety of vehicles to choose from, you will take command of over 2,000 tanks, planes, helicopters, and ships from 10 major nations, ranging from the biplanes of 1920s to the fighter jets and main battle tanks of the modern era. Immerse yourself in intense warfare War Thunder, where incredibly detailed vehicles and highly realistic graphics combined with authentic sound effects place you in the command of the most powerful war machines throughout history. War Thunder has one of the most sophisticated vehicle damage models in gaming. Every vehicle is incredibly detailed and modeled down to their individual individual components offering a highly immersive combat experience. My favorite feature is the X-ray view. It provides you a precise detail of where the shell penetrated and which components were damaged leading to the destruction of the vehicle. War Thunder also features a comprehensive customization system with countless camouflages, historical markings, and decorations making your equipment unique to you. Join the millions of players already waiting for you on the battlefield for free on PC, PlayStation, or Xbox. New and returning players who haven't played for 6 months receive a massive bonus across all platforms using the link in the pinned comment or the video description. I did encounter a few bugs, I was unable to do one of the earlier quests where I had to pick up an envelope. 
it kind of just disappeared after I picked it up. But honestly, I wasn't paying too much attention at the time. So there is a slight possibility that I did not have enough space on me. But I'm pretty sure someone in chat had similar issue with the same quest. So I think it's not just me. But the biggest bug for me was getting a huge lag spike out of nowhere. And then once I got my frame rate back, my FPS would hit the floor every single time I turned my character left or right. And the only thing that would fix it was restarting the game. And sometimes it happened multiple times per raid, which was getting really, really annoying to be fair. That being said though, this is a testing phase for a reason and hopefully all that stuff will be ironed out on the release. So far, the overall feedback has been extremely positive for the game, either coming from people just watching my stream and watching me play the game or people in chat who have also gotten access in the closed beta test they mostly have said good things about the game they really enjoy it the only way i can really see this game failing in the long run is if the microtransactions get out of hand if they get too greedy i understand the game has to make money but it shouldn't really get out of hand if it stays in the line of like stash base and battle passes and cosmetic items like clothing you know it's not that big of a deal um, I would prefer no gun skins, but I think it's not that big of a deal. Also, I know the mobile game has secure containers on a monthly subscription. I'm sure that is coming into the PC version as well. It's not ideal, but I know they have to make their money somehow. And the bigger prison pocket is definitely a good, good selling point for them. So I don't really hate on it too much if it's not like extremely expensive per month. I really hope there is not a way to buy in-game currency. That would kind of suck. I know it would probably keep out more RMT gamers. I think it's a bit of a win-lose situation and it would probably make the game really pay to win if you can buy the in-game currency a lot. So I don't know if that's a thing in the mobile. I really hope it's not. And another thing that could really kill the game is obviously cheaters. In a free-to-play game, I'm sure it's not that hard to get away with cheating, especially if you can make multiple accounts. I know I'm sure there's hardware ID bans and stuff like that in place, but I'm also sure there's ways around it. So we're going to have to wait and see. I hope there's going to be some sort of system in place similar to CSGO's Overwatch, or at least I hope something like that would come in the future. It would be really nice to have like a community effort to fight against cheaters, but I guess we're just going to have to wait and see. TLDR is that the game has massive potential and without a doubt will carve itself a massive chunk of the extraction shooter player base. The gameplay itself is fun, visually looks really really good and runs well. The user friendly experience is a massive bonus for the more casual gamers but also will be enjoyed by more hardcore gamers such as myself. We just have to hope that the microtransactions won't get out of hand and they can keep the cheaters at bay. I will personally be playing a lot more Arena Breakout throughout the playtest as I have not had this much fun in a extraction shooter in a long, long time. But at the end of the day, it really matters what you guys think of the game. I personally like it. I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments. What do you like? What do you dislike? If you have any concerns and all that good stuff. Thank you very much for watching the video, my friends, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks again to War Thunder for making this video possible. Do not forget to click the link in the description and download their game now and take advantage of their generous bonus pack to enjoy the best vehicle combat game out there.